I write in the name of the thoughtful and Christian women of England, and I beg leave to draw your attention to the attempt now being made to bring into action, generally throughout the country, measures which provide for the legislation of prostitution. We are deeply convinced that such legislation is opposed to the interests of morality, while it will prove ineffectual to stamp out disease. Its effect upon those large classes of men to whom, in default of religious principle or a high moral training, the laws of the country are a guide to conscience is to teach them to look upon fornication not as a sin and a shame, but as a necessity which the state takes care that they shall be able to practice with impunity. Further, the proposed measures, politically considered, are without precedent in the history of our country in their tyranny and their defiance of all which have ever been considered by Englishmen as justice. If you study the provisions of the Acts of 1866 and 1869 and the evidence given last session before the Select Committee of the House of Commons, you will see how distinctly the introduction of such a law tends to the creation of a bureaucracy in England which would be intolerable to a free people. It resembles the Spanish Inquisition in its system of paid spies and the admission of anonymous whispers as evidence not to be rebutted. Contrary to the entire spirit of English law, the whole burden of proof is thrown not upon the accuser, but upon the accused. There is a complete absence of all fair and open court to say nothing of jury. And the accused, in this case, are the most weakest, the most helpless and the most friendless of the community. By this law, a crime has been created in order that it may be severely punished. But observe, that has been ruled to be a crime in women, which is not to be considered a crime in men. The alternative for every woman accused is either to appear before the magistrates or to submit to a torture, which to any woman with a spark of feeling left in her is worse than death. Refusing to submit to the torture, she is imprisoned. There is no escape from the one penalty or the other. An innocent woman who is accused may escape the torture, but she cannot escape the appearance before the magistrates. And that very appearance means ruin to the character and the prospects of a poor and virtuous woman. The tortures to which these poor fallen women are subjected by this law has no parallel except in the darkest and foulest forms of persecution practiced on helpless women in the cruelest ages of history.